بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رحمة المهداة والنحمة المزان وعلى أعوذ بالله من شرور الأنفس ومن سيئات الأعمال يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أما بعد um, The issue of the interactions between opposite gender and the etiquette of uh, working with opposite gender and the issue of marriage all of this connected together. Uh, let me just say from the, the general perspective that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created humanity as male and female. And he mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakrin wa untha. Oh mankind, we have created you from a male and female. Wa ja'annakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila lita'araf. We made you to nation and tribes. So that you may know one another. And the best among you, those are the most righteous. This verse, Surah 49, Ayah 13, Surah Al-Hujrah, is sum up the relationship and the interaction between male and female, and interaction with people of different culture, of different race. Racial interaction, gender, inter gender interaction, uh, class interaction, poor and rich, all of kind of things, you know, in all the categories that you can think of, of human being. But what, what we're going to concentrate on, in the first aspect of the verse, Allah says, من ذكر وأنثى, from male and female. But he said also, لتعرفوا. He created male and female so you might know one another. This ta'aruf is a very broad word. It's an amazing word. And Quran is a word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every word of it is very loaded. You can write books on it. And the word ta'aruf, it is in Arabic from tafa'ul, meaning that there is a mutual uh, traffic here. You get to know someone, a person gets to know you. Therefore, there are three layers of this gender relationship. Are you ready? Number one, you get to know the nature of males and the nature of females as the opposite gender. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all humanity from one soul, made them male and female. There's a difference, there's certain aspect of this relationship is unique. For example, do you know women speak more than men by words, per words, per day? Do you know that? You don't know that? Now you know. Uh, do you know that women are more multitasks than men? They can do more more than one thing at the same time. Do you know that? Do you know women are more patient in general with a task that comes with their nature as mothers that men do with their children? The most perseverance. You ask a, 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 man, a man to to watch his own children, and he, if anything get distract him, like, oh my goodness, I cannot do this, get frustrated. Because, number one, men are mul not multitasks. They cannot, you know, watch your children while talking the phone and cooking and doing all of kind of things. Or even re sending an email or something. Women, they have that kind of sense. This is about, about women. Do you know men express their feeling through a physical uh, gift or something material? Where the women may express their feeling through words? A man show his love by buying something for a woman. Well, a woman not necessarily does that. She gives emotional comfort. For without understanding the nature between men and women, you will not 
get to know another person. Even if you don't know your own sister at home. Because you want to treat your sister as your brother. No, treat your sister as your sister. <coughs> your sister, she's not a guy. Okay. <laughs> and your and your uh, and your brother is not a sister. You have to be able to realize the gender dynamic. You know, when people get married, sometimes a sister will say to me, he talked to me like he talking to a guy. He does all the time. I'm not one of his guy's friends. Even the jokingly, and sometimes physically, he might push his wife say, oh, it's very tough. Say, what is this? You know, be gentle. You cannot treat a woman like you treat a guy. The problem in America, there's a chauvinism and extreme feminism. Extreme fem 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 feminist movement, extreme feminist group, and chauvinist. There are men who want to bully women, and there's women who says men are our enemy. That is not the right thing. Because Allah says in the Quran that men and women are pair. They are not enemy. They're not like this. Like this. Now, when you get married, actually is completing the your religion by what? How do you complete the religion? Do you have marker here? No. Huh? This is your S, what that stands for? Single. And this is your married. It, 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 it means that if you are single, your prayer is half discounted to 50%. When you say complete your half, you know, marriage is half your redeem, what that means? What it means? Hello? I'm asking a question actually, not for me to answer it myself. What it means? Is it 50% discount? What is it? Listen, in, in, in life, you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many ways. Going to work, you worship Allah. Exercising, you worship Allah. You, you are a child of someone, good relationship with the parents, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you get married, you get to live aspect of your life now as a husband or a wife that it was not part of your Miserable singlehood life. I'm so excuse me. Excuse me. Did I say that? <laughs> because I'm happy married, I'll say that. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I have all of you to have a happy marriage like mine, better than mine even. So, therefore, you do this. Uh, here, you be tested because when you're a spouse. You enter a relationship voluntary. And the marriage contract is a voluntary contract. It's not biological. That means you walk in it knowing what you get walking into. And you're staying in it because you want to stay in it. Because it's a voluntary contract. It requires tremendous patience and understanding. But it begins with this first aspect of it and the interaction and knowing how to interact, proper interactions. I, I've been taped, but, but I, I'm gonna speak to you. Can you close the door? Because I'm gonna speak very frankly. I don't like this uh, uh, adult, young adult only talk, okay? Um, if it's not hard, we're gonna open the door again. Now, let me 
be frank with you. There is difference between physical attraction and between lover's commitment. There's pre uh, the immature love that you see in high school. Oh, he's cute. He, she's nice. She's beautiful. Blah, blah, blah. And the people like who spring like making a comments about how he looks, how she looks. That called physical attraction, physical desires. This is not relationship. From Islamic perspective, how Islam makes us to address this issue? To do what? Hello? You're a gaze. Why you know you're gaze in Islam? Because you should not desire someone you're not gonna marry to, and there's no possibility of getting married to, and you're not gonna ask their hand. Because it's out of the boundary. Is that agreeable? You understand? Even if when people make a joke about you heard the word checking out? I'm gonna, this will be like down to earth talk. Checking out people. Why are you checking out people if you're not gonna check the marriage? If you're gonna marry them? We are living in the culture that make gender relationship so horrible sometimes. I'm not, not talking American culture, I'm talking about contemporary culture across the world, across the globe. Women have been treated as an object so much that males have difficulty interacting with them. Not I'm saying that they do, you work with females, and Islam saying that. You work with them, you go to school with them. Islam does not believe and, and by the way, I'm on tape, uh, but I can stand with that. Islam never said segregate, segregate women and women in society. There's no a single proof of segregation of men and women from society. If they're, they're completely segregated, not, not anywhere to be seen, then what's the meaning of lowering your gaze? What's the meaning of modest clothing? Do you know the women? participate in the army. What does the Sahaba? Authentic hadith. Wa inni la ara Aisha wa Ummu Salim wa inna huwa la mushammaratani. He said, I saw Aisha radallahu anha al Muslim. They roll in their sleeve, bringing water to people who are sick or wounded. In the Masjid of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, women was present. Even there was no partitions. In the discussions, Women were present. During Umar the long time, when Umar the made a statement about a dowry of women, a woman stood up and corrected him while he was in khutbah. The Sahaba society was the women and men are interacted. Sometimes we have a problem in the Muslim community. Muslim men been told that if you see a Muslim sister in the masjid, don't talk to her, don't give her salam, nothing. Even don't return the salam. You heard that? Many times I walk in this masjid, I see a sister say, Assalamu alaikum. They don't respond to me at all. Why? Because they've been told that you should not respond to the salam. The same sister goes to a, a, a grocery store and the guy say hi. She will say hi. Okay, man, a man. I'm in mean, the masjid, more clean, pure place, supposed to be. And men, Muslim men have been told, those are the Muslim girls or Muslim women. Don't talk to them, but you're going to marry one of them. And those are non Muslim and people of other faith in the school. Don't talk to them, uh, talk, you know, talk to them, but don't marry any one of them. Because they cannot tell you not to talk. Therefore, you develop double personalities. We completely not interacting with opposite gender whom we may select a spouse from, and we interacting with others. And therefore, the rate of 
Muslim men, men out of faith, outside of the faith, have increased tremendously in the past decade. And more Muslim women without a spouse. And here, here are the guidelines. Three things supposed to be in the interactions. Pure, uh, pure intention. Never talk with someone with harm, to harm them or to let them in a way that is not acceptable. Number two, that find a common work, common good, something that you do with them or common good. Yeah, yeah, a project or something. Never been in isolation completely with a female. Khalwa. The problem is that there's a khalwa, was complete, you know, exclu being, being uh, you know, uh, an excluded place uh, of physical and one of them of uh, computer. Let me tell you something about computer. And I'm quite sure every one of you here know more computer than I do. But the computer is the place where there's no haya. Am I correct? Muslim men in this masjid and Muslim women in this masjid, young ladies, from high school up, they do say things to each other in a line they will not say face to face, including crossing the line. And people, they created different zones. The computers is free, what, zone. Everything goes. I don't care. It just express your feeling. And when they see each other face to face, they feel shame. I have seen text messages. When I was in Michigan one time, or one of those uh, courses, people, one of the youth directors showed me how the young people, sometimes they send messages to one another, and said messages, uh, he took a picture of a copy of uh, text messages, they shared with him, that they will not say to one another face to face. The people will send an email or a text to tell someone you have a crush on them. But they will not say that face to face to them when they see them. Okay, what do you do with a crush that cannot materialize? You know what I mean by materialize? What the material, how do you materialize a crush? Marriage. Therefore, you, you, it, there some people have crush on actresses. Subhanallah. And they tell me that. Oh my goodness, I'm crazy about her. I said, who is she? she where she lives? In a different planet called Hollywood. Okay, how often do you see her? No, they are movies. This is horrible. Come on, give me a break. What's of energy and what's of time and what's of mental capacity? A person that doesn't care about you, you know? They are far away. Some love can kill someone. That they're going to kill you. You don't love that kind of things. That's lost. This is lost completely. And a Muslim does not do that. A mu'min does not do that. Okay? Now, some of the interaction give people mixed signals. I'm, 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 this, this is not supposed to be a fake lecture. At least I'm uh, down to earth talk. For example, a sister would text somebody or email somebody, say, I'm just not checking on you. How are you doing? Guess what time is it? 11 o'clock at night. How are you? What's she telling him? 11 o'clock at night, and a brother gets an email, she said, Hi, how are you doing? We're just checking on you. How are you feeling? How are you doing? What that means? Hello? I'm speaking English. What that means? Thinking about you. I'd like to have a conversation with you. 
It is not about planning anything. So when I go out about work, just want to check on it. A brother, incident sister, incident messages, 12 o'clock at night. Oh, you're online. I just noticed you're online. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Brother, so so just, brother, I'm fine. And then next day, talking to her friends, she, you know, he emailed me last night at 12 o'clock. He said, how are you? Oh, he did the same thing at 11.30 with me. Aha. Uh -huh. He said, they're Mexicans. And there's some people love attention. If two sisters talking about him, oh my goodness, he's a king. Like he has to increase his tension and popularity among the sisters. When more sisters have to talk about him, everyone thinks that he likes her. That's a bad business. Don't do that. It happened a lot in MSAs. A sister, everyone thinks that he likes her because he sent her message at 10 o'clock at night, and the other one at 11 o'clock at night, and, you know, paying attention to someone more than uh, ordinary work. You know what that means? It creates what? With a broken heart. And there's so many people walking this earth with broken heart. And the word broken heart because they walk in the wrong zone. And they allow people to break their heart over and over and over again. Sister, a brother send you a message at 10 o'clock at night, say, what's up, what you're about? If you want to come, if you want to know me, come through the door, not to the window. You know the windows? What am I talking about windows? Computer windows. <laughs> okay? Don't do computer windows. Come to the door. Come to my father. Talk to my brother. Let me tell you something. The most dangerous thing in interaction, if a brother said to a sister, keep this conversation between you and I, don't tell anyone. Not to tell anyone is of dangerous. An imam, another friend, somebody else has to know. But don't tell anyone. Sister, you set yourself for a big disaster. Because you know what happened? Your heart is op it opened quickly than the heart of the guy. By the time that he's a quarter in the space, you are 75%. And if he move, pull out from this relationship, change his mind, have a change of heart, what happened to your heart? From an Islamic perspective, Keep it kosher, uh, sorry, keep it halal. <laughs> okay? Therefore, do not uh, surrender your heart. Except so the person is trustworthy. Trustworthy. And a person cannot be trustworthy except that person fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he knows that they're worried about you crossing the, crossing the boundaries more than themselves. They will say, sister, or brothers, we should not do that. Islamic is not correct. Because experience shows me that male and female are naturally what? Naturally attracted to one another. When you talk about, I like you, you like me, I miss you, you miss me, then you can say, can we see each other? Can we? You have to remember where you're taking this conversation. And who is involved in the conversation that you have. And how serious the conversation is. Okay, more be frank more with you. I, I hope that you, you appreciate my frankness with it, there with you. Men think physical. 
we want things emotional. Women translate rela uh, relationship with how much you really shows respect to talking to me. How and men, they, they want to have physical relationship. And therefore, the danger that from the hadith of Rasulullah said, there's no time, time, a man and a woman are completely in isolation with that shaitan being the third. You know, one of the things that nonsense I hear, I'm going to be honest with you, a brother is so relaxed with the sisters and have even physical touch, and he said, oh, brother, what do you do? She's just like my sister. I said, give me a break. You know, I, I understand that he tried to tell me he's like a biological sister. But Allah does not say that. You stay with what Allah says. Don't reinterpret what Allah says. If she's not mahram, don't touch her. Do not give her a ride by yourself, you and her alone in a car. I sound very conservative. I sound sunnatic here. This is a sunnah. And sunnatic is an of, of, uh, English word. Because, trust me, most of the mistake we've done of when you lower the, what? Lower guard. And without knowing it, you're crossing the boundaries. You hear what I'm saying? Okay, now, what if somebody really likes someone in the masjid, or in school, but he knows that this, or she knows, there's no way her parents are going to accept the guy. There's no way his parents are going to accept the lady. What do you do with that? Question for you. I can tell you the scenario after you answer this question. What? Make a stikhara. How is stikhara going to change your parents' mind? Well, Allah bless you. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. What else? Walk away. You have said walk away. Yes? Okay. Uh, that before you talk to her or after you talk to her? Uh, after you talk to her. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you the, my experience and counseling and all of that. I just finished a book. We need to just publish it to make sure that's a purchase and the others give the endorsement to it. It will be it's called Before You Tie the Knot. I'm, uh, and, and Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and others. I'm waiting for their endorsement. Yes? Before you talk to the guy or after you talk to the guy? Huh? Before. Okay. Good. You pray istikhara and but you you use your approach by uh, the approach you, you choose that uh, you don't talk to the guy first. Mm -hmm. You convince your parents. Okay. Let me just good you mentioned this. This is my advice. If you're thinking there's a possibility you may marry someone out of your culture, out of your race. You need to have this conversation now before you find that person. If you, if you are a person who's open to all the possibilities, you should have the conversation now. The danger of having a conversation with someone whom you know that your parents may not approve of, you're going to do what? Again, breaking hearts. Because 
sometimes it's about losing your parents or getting married to the guy that they don't approve of. And you should not start a conversation with someone about marriage. If you know that your mother or your father may not approve of, because if you do that, the feeling, especially to the guys, that the sister has, and expectation and so forth, it is very difficult to heal. But when you have a conversation of marriage, you have to always to say, this is all a conversation to explore. There's no promise being made. Don't talk lovey-dovey, like, how oh, I miss you, what are you doing? I have your picture on my computer server, whatever it is. I'm just looking at you now. MashaAllah, that dangerous. Every time you do this, the heart goes like this. You know? More in love. And then it says, by the way, I just talked to my mother last night. And I tried to convince her, and she said no. I don't know if I can really, I really break my heart. I really want to marry you so badly. But, you know, my parents said, no. After six months of conversation, texting every time, she going to the mall and you texting her. She going to school, you texting her. You go drive her crazy. After six months, she said, I'm dropping you. What do you do? More of breaking heart. You shatter the heart. Don't have that conversation. If the right ingredients are not there, and the foundation has not been built for it. Okay? The other things about the interaction, I talked about using of the computer, of exchange personal pictures, discussing the boundaries of Sharia. When I say personal, this Listen, there's a picture about you, you and your family and so forth. I'm talking personal pictures, somebody really wearing a cloth that only a, a husband sees. A sister wearing hijab and then showing him her hair, her neck. It happened. That goes in the boundaries. Because if by doing that, you show some of your body to someone that if he changed his mind, as if he had married you. It has to be a general. When a people, people share that, even that sharing has to be approved by somebody else. To say, yes, it's a time for you to share this, uh, you know, a picture of your mother, a picture of your sister, and so forth. And somebody else has to monitor that, the proof of that. Because was that, we're doing that without that proper uh, check and balance, you said you'll suffer trouble. I'm going to fill some, some time for question asked. But I would like to say the last things, actually, or the few things I want to say, that one of the biggest problems, uh, you want me to stop? Oh, no. No, 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 question and answer, how long? Um, 15 minutes. 15 minutes? OK. One of the biggest problems I've seen is long distance relationship. It's one of the biggest. What do I mean by that? Say you went to Virginia Tech. And you saw a sister there. You liked her and those kind of things. But you maybe never communicated of marriage and so forth. You're about to graduate and you're panicking. Oh my goodness, she's, she's graduated. I never told her that I like her. I, don't, I, I want to marry them. You start, you approach her as you graduated. I'm telling you what actual scenario happened, not for Virginia Tech necessarily, but this happened. They exchange emails, they start having long distance relationship. Back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. When the time comes, the young lady asks, are you going to propose to me? Are you going to ask my family? I want to get to know you. 
Six months pass. A year pass. He still he got to know her. They become very emotionally dependent on one another. And he have not done his homework that I was mentioned earlier. Because the dilemma here, the brothers and sisters, they don't balance of the period of knowing and the timeline of making a move. And therefore, it becomes online dating. There is no is open ended. Some people say, brother, do you know I've been talking for this or this man for two years straight? I say, how often do you talk? Every night. I'm so hurt. I said, in these two years, have you put any timeline? No. Have you asked him when and how you will move on? No. That's where the problem comes from. The long distance relationship uh, it creates insecurity. What do I mean by that? You want to continue talking online and talk often because you're worried about him living in Virginia, being interested in somebody else. Therefore, you need to keep them engaged. Not engaged, engagement, engaged. And it just takes a longer time. If I want to just warn you from that, don't do that. The last thing I want to say, and then I'll open for question and answer. Um, it is readiness. Being ready financially, emotionally, psychologically. Some people enter a relationship premature, like a premature baby. They're not mature in their uh, in their thinking, in their emotion, and they enter a relationship to learn all of the things on the relationship. It's true that you will not know how to interact between male and female until you interact. But please, 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 sit with someone who is a professional counselor, somebody who knows this stuff, and get proper guidance before you jump to the water. Get proper guidance. Okay. Um, uh, one of the female professor told me that whenever a, f a young lady come to her and said, I'm talking to someone, I'm interested in someone, first thing she asked her, she said, I will ask her, how did you get to know him? She said, if they, if he, she told me that she met him in a way was not proper. She tell her that, be careful because the beginning of this relationship was not straight, was not correct. And if you don't correct it now, it's going to hunt you the rest of your relationship. Reset your intention, like a still far. No. Some people say to us that we cross boundaries, but they still want to get married. Then we say to them, you have to get, you know, you, as you get married, you have to know what was wrong about what you did and how you will live a righteous life after marriage. Because let me tell you something, when you cross line, male have very little trust after that of the female, although they're the one who initiated that. And therefore the sister have, we, we stay in, with the sin of the boundary of Sharia, you protect yourself all the way. That's why it says in Arabic, there's no person, matarika, no one will live out and not practice something Sharia said, will that person, will that, that person become in need one day for it? Say, I wish I've stayed with the boundaries of Sharia. Um, we have uh, sad stories of people even crossing the boundary all the way. 
I'm bringing children to this world. This is extreme. Stay with the band of Sharia, you never lose.